Great. Father in heaven, we praise you, God, for who you are. We praise you, Lord, for you are sovereign. We praise you, Lord, for your love. You are just. You are holy. And we thank you, God, for, for your faithfulness, Lord God. And uh, we were able to, you made us through 2020, and uh, it's just the start of 2021. And uh, we are confident, oh Lord, that you will be with us and all the things that you will be doing, Lord God, for those who love you, for us Christians, for us believers, will always be for our own good. So Father in heaven, we ask for your Holy Spirit to open our eyes, our mind, and our hearts, Lord God, and make us understand uh, the topic that we will be discussing tonight. And Lord, may we not only understand, but live it, oh Lord, in our lives, in our day-to-day -day lives, so that we may be able to savor the joy uh, that comes with it, oh Lord, understanding who you are and what you do in this world, in this universe even. So Father in heaven, we ask for your Holy Spirit to be with us, to guide us, to lead us, and to take charge, and to take over. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So ang ating pong, uh, title ng ating pag-usapan today is Comfort in God's Providence. So I know we've heard the word providence so many times at hindi pa natin napag-usapan to. And uh, what I will do tonight, uh, because providence of God is such a huge topic na hindi po tayo pwedeng uh, to go into detail. So what I will do is uh, I will give you the overview based on what I have heard sa podcast ni John Piper. Because si John Piper ngayon, uh, within this month, I ilo-launch na niya yung book niya na Providence, which is, it has around 700 pages and 3,000 uh, Bible citations, Bible verses quoted dyan. So, uh, sabi nga niya, ang, ang, pan, ang how long niya ginawa tong book, sabi niya, 50 years. Ibig sabi hindi siya nagsimula na 50 years, but all his 50 years of experience sa ministry and 50 years of experience niya sa Panginoon ay nandyan na sulat niya lahat sa book na yan. And the title is Providence. So I would love to have one. I would love for you guys to have a copy as well. Uh, kahit PDF man lang, pero wala pa, hindi pa niya ni launch. So uh, meron siyang preview somehow kanina sa podcast niya. I was preparing another topic, but then I was really compelled to, to at least uh, give you the overview because it is timely. Na sa, sa mga testimonies that we heard just moments ago, ay napakahirap talaga ng 2020 and this is the start of the year now we just crossed 2020 and uh, pang seventh day pa lang ng 2021 and it's just the right time na for us to discuss about God's providence no ang nangyari sa 2020 2020 was horrible you know that's the word um my covid-19 there was a pandemic Businesses closed, salaries are affected, marami sa atin na wala ng trabaho, and so on. And uh, sadly, marami din tayo mga kakilala na when I say marami, it's more than one, more than two na namatay dahil sa COVID. And you can even say yung mga nagmi-minister sa Painon, pastors and pastors, and their wives, and so many other mga frontliners na kakilala natin. Some maybe a family members natin ay namatay because of COVID. So 2020 was not easy. And now, kapapasok lang ng 2021, uh, before even pagpasok ng 2021, meron na namang variant ng bagong coronavirus. And uh, what does that mean? It means, hindi natin alam na naman no, what's going to happen. Would it be worse than what we have now? Although may mga vaccine na tayo, but maraming tanong, maraming uncertainties na what about these vaccines that we have now? Are those... Uh, these vaccines effective sa itong bagong COVID? At kung hindi, ano naman yung effect nito sa educational sector, sa, sa lahat, sa gobyerno, sa ekonomiya? So we don't know. And uh, this uncertainty and uh, we are facing even just the start of 2021 is not comforting at all. And that is why we need to understand what is going on and what is going to happen from now on in light of God's providence? At kung ano yung providence. So I'm using the verse Romans 8.28, but we will discuss about, about this verse later na. Unahin natin yung sinabi ko sa inyong uh, overview. Tatlong points na ni-mention ni 
John Piper with regards to providence. Okay, so why is it important to understand God's providence? It is important to understand God's providence so that we may know what it means, what providence is, how it affects us, our personal lives, and the world as a whole. And by God's grace, it shall make us trust God more. Understanding it would make us trust God more, which may result to comfort us such uncertainties that we think that we are facing right now. Because if you don't know what you have in Jesus, if you don't understand the work of God, there will always be uncertainties and doubts. But understanding providence will make us trust him more. And then com it may comfort us and it gives us peace and rest in spite and despite of what's going to happen and joy as we continue our walk in Christ. So what about, anong sinabi ni John Piper nito? O kung bakit importante na ma ma maintindihan natin ang God's providence? Since God's providence is all embracing and all pervading, it relates powerfully, meaningfully, immediately to every situation in every person's life. In these selected persons, but every person's life, nothing is outside the providence of God. His design in his providence at every moment of our lives is relevant for how we live and how we respond to everything that comes our way. May it be sa trabaho, may it be sa love life mo, may it be sa family, and so on. So it is all encompassing, it is all embracing and all pervading. So what is God's providence according to the West, Westminster Confession of Faith? Ito po yung sabi ng Westminster. Ayan, may link dyan. If you want to look at kung ano yung Westminster Confession of Faith, may link na nilagay ko din dyan. I-upload ko naman tong PowerPoint later on. Ang description ng Westminster uh, Confession of Faith sa providence is this. God, the great creator of all things, doth or does uphold, direct, dispose, and govor govern all creatures, all actions, and all things from the greatest even to the least by his most wise and holy providence according to his infallible foreknowledge and the free and immutable counsel of his own will. Ibig sabihin, hindi nagbabago yung will ng Panginoon. Yung will na dinikri niya even before the foundation of the world ay hindi nagbabago. To the praise of the glory of his wisdom, power, justice, goodness, and mercy. So that's the purpose, to the praise of his glory. That's according to the Westminster Confession. According to John MacArthur naman, napaka short lang. Providence is how God orchestrates everything to accomplish his purpose. When we say everything, it means every single thing, no? his purpose. Okay, John Piper, God's providence is the exercise of his sovereignty. Alam po natin ang meaning ng sovereignty. Sovereignty is God's right and power to do all that he pleases. Okay? His right and his power to do whatever he wants to do. And no one can question him. No? So, ang providence is the exercise of that sovereignty for a purpose, purposefully. God's providence is the exercise of his sovereignty purposefully. So, there's a purpose for exercising the sovereignty of God. It is God's use of his power and authority to bring about an ultimate purpose for the universe which cannot fail. So God's purpose never fails. So yan ang description ni John Piper. So anong ibig sabihin ng, uh, for me, the, the way you see it, the natural order of things is God's providence. Sun rises, moon sets, and so on. Uh, we breathe air, the Lord supplies oxygen. We wake up, we, we, we eat, we hunger. And all. Lahat ito ay God's providence. Now, Hindi natin nakikita that God's providence is working in our day-to-day -day life because hindi natin naintindihan na we are in the center of God's providence. No? That is, pag sinabi natin ito yung regular day or mundane, mundane day, it's just, ito yung providence ng Panginoon. He orchestrates every single thing 
Like now, I am discussing about providence. He orchestrated everything even before time for me to be here right now and for you guys to be there right now listening to what providence is. So I hope somehow naintindihan yun ano yung providence na hindi walang coincidence. It's all the providence of God. I was speaking to one person a while ago and we discussed about uh, Romans 8.28. In all things, God works for the good of those who love him. And then he somehow mentioned that uh, for those who do not love him, uh, puro coincidence na yung buhay nila. Uh, I was about to comment, but then we changed the topic. So, But there's no such thing as coincidence. Everything is under the providence of God, under the authority of God, under the power of God for his will and purpose. No. So, so I hope somehow my naintindihan yung um, providence so we can move forward sa three things na pag-usapan natin regarding sa providence. Ano yung extent ng providence? Ano yung sakop ng providence? May limitation ba yung providence ng Panginoon or wala? Ano yung nature ng providence ng Panginoon? At ano yung goal ng providence ng Panginoon? Ano yung purpose ng providence ng Panginoon? So let's move forward. What is the extent of God's providence? Remember po, kinuha ko po itong outline na to sa podcast ni John Piper. And I look for the, uh, the verses that supports these. What is the extent of God's providence? How far does it reach? How far does God's providence reach? How detailed is it? No? Paano ba sa detalye ng buhay natin? May, may details ba sa buhay natin na napakaliit na hindi na yan papansin ng Lord, hindi na yan kasama sa providence ng Lord? No? How detailed is it? What does it include? Pinag-usapan natin ng providence because I wanted to point out that what happened in 2020 is all under the providence of God. God was never surprised na dumating yung coronavirus and sometimes uh, it does not make sense when we pray. Now one time, uh, not my, one time, I've heard many times uh, OPM, na God is with us in the fight of this virus. It's uh, it's a show that somehow we are ignorant of the providence of God, saying that God is fighting against the virus, not understanding that the virus is part of God's providence, not understanding that the virus that he sent sa 2020, he ordained it even before time for the purpose, uh, for his good purpose especially sa ating mga Kristiyano. And we might not uh, we might not have seen the ang purpose ng Panginoon but eventually we will, no? Na makita natin that God is always good. Uh, or he's good all the time. So how far does it reach? How detailed is it? What does it include? So din yung sabi ni John Piper, ang providence ng Panginoon is this all pervading. Ano ibig sabihin ng all pervading? All encompassing, sakop lahat, and all embracing. It's the same, technically speaking. No, all pervading and all embracing no? across the board. No? There is nothing in the universe that lies outside God's meticulous, meticulous detail. No, an infinitely far-reaching governance. So, not a single. Mama, yung pakita ko sa inyo. Na I, I usually mention atom or, or proton or neutron na maliit na particles. But then I check kanina, may, may, mas maliit pa pala. And uh, the Bible, there are so many verses that uh, says na ang providence ng Panginoon is even from the, the least or even the Westminster Confession na kinuha nila lahat yung confession na yun from uh, verses na sinabi na ang providence ng Panginoon is from the least to the greatest. No? So sa pinakamaliit, doon papunta, uh, uh, from the pinakamaliit to the pinakamalaki. No? What else? So ito po yung mga support na mahihita natin na the providence of God is all pervading and all embracing. Sakop lahat. No? Ephesians 1.11 In Him we have obtained an inheritance having been predestined according to the purpose of Him who works All things according to the counsel of His will. Ang all things jan ibig sabihin jan all things. Lahat lahat no? uh, who works all things all things according to His counsel, according to the counsel of His will. John for uh, Job forty two two. 
I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Remember, and providence is the exercise of God's sovereignty for a purpose. No. So, and he works in all things to achieve his purpose. No. Mamaya, mahita natin kung ano yung purpose, ano yung goal sa pag-orchestrate ng Panginoon from time immemorial hanggang sa eternity in all things for a purpose. No. Colossians 1, 16 to 17, for by him, Jesus, we're talking about Jesus, for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. So like us now, hindi nakakrumble yung building na kung saan kayo, yung AC nyo is tamang-tama lang, yung oxygen is hindi nagbabago yung component. No. Otherwise, pag nabago ng component ng the, 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 the air that we're breathing, kung hindi na oxygen yan, patay tayong lahat. But everything, yung orbit stays, yung, yung mga planet stays in their orbit because Jesus is holding all things. And that is part of his providence. So far-reaching providence, far-reaching exercise of his control, his power, his authority, and his right. Okay. Isaiah 46.10, declaring the end from the beginning. So without, hindi na kailangan uh, makita pa ni Lord or hindi, pa na kailangan, hindi na kailangan experience pa ni Lord. He declares the end of what's going to end from the beginning and from ancient times things not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand. His will shall stand. Nothing can, can change that. And I will accomplish all my purpose. So, ginagamit ni Lord lahat, lahat, lahat in all things, even time past, time present, time future. Kasi hindi naman time bound si Lord. He's using all things, everything, to accomplish his purpose, and that purpose will never change. And nothing can change that purpose. Ibig sabihin, walang maka-interfere ng purpose niya, nothing can thwart his power. No, walang makapag-subvert uh, ng kanyang providence. Kung yan yung providence niya, yan yung decreeing will niya, walang makapagbago niyan. And he uses all things para ma- his will will come to pass. No? Even the smallest details sa buhay natin, ang sabi ng Psalm 139, 139, 16, I think, no, na lahat ng, uh, even before things happen sa buhay natin ay nakasulat na sa book ng Panginoon. Ibig sabihin, sinulat ni Lord lahat ng mangyayari sa buhay natin, even from the small, sa pinakamalit na detail, even before the foundation of the world, and it ha it is happening, it is unfolding sa buhay natin. Ibig sabihin, Nothing can can change. Nothing can uh, shaken or even this. Uh, well, how what are or ano mas appropriate word niya na walang makapag thwart. Nothing can thwart God's will. No, nothing at all. And He uses every single thing. Uh, kasama nga yung there are so many questions about this. I know you have so many questions, especially sa buhay natin. Now, what about yung mga death ng family natin? And what about yung sins even? Oh, the Bible says God uses every single thing uh, para ma-accomplish yung will niya. You know? Matthew 10, 29 Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yung two sparrows, parang two, uh, dalawang sparrow, isang pwede parang worthless, walang value yan. And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the Father's will, apart from your Father. No. So technically speaking, walang namamatay na cockroach, walang namamatay na ant without God's will. No. So, understanding this makes us think na lalo na yung nawala ng trabaho, now, kami sa sitwasyon namin ngayon, shaky yung company namin. Uh, kahapon lang, nag-start na kaming 
nag-submit ng mga documents because there's another company who's going to take over. And there are a lot of uncertainties. Are they going to retain us employees? Or kung i-retain man kami, pareho pa ba yung package? And, and so many things, so many uncertainties. But understanding the providence of God, that God's hand is in every single thing that happened in your life, and understanding that God is good in all things, He works for the good of those who love Him, it comforts us, right? Na, I am in, in the, the best hand possible. Na, so hindi masabi, I'm in good hands. You're in the best hands. No? Kaya lang, sometimes people, since ang mind natin is finite, hindi natin maintindihan kung ano yung ginagawa ng Panginoon na ultimately will achieve the goal na sinabi sa Romans 8.28, it is for our own good. But we have to understand this. Romans 8.28 promise that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him. Ang promise ng Romans, ng providence ng Panginoon is for the good of those who love Him. But we have to understand this. That promise is only for those who love God. And who are those lovers of God? Only those God regenerated. Only those God saved. Only those God snatched from the kingdom of darkness into his kingdom. So it comforts us and it should instill fear or and it still fear sa instill fear sa mga unbelievers because that promise is not for them. So kung ang lahat ng bagay are working towards our own good. Minsan there are so many times I kita natin hindi naman good to but trust God because he says all things work for the good ultimately for you, you no know? pero yung mga unbelievers that promise is not for them and they should fear and for us believers na may mga pamilya at kaibigan na mga unbelievers we should somehow have this anguish in us that we should share zealously the gospel to them and introduce them to Christ so that they may understand that there's no way that they can save themselves from the wrath of God because they're sinners and God is holy. And God's demand no, sa kanyang judgment, how can, imagine, how can an unholy person stand in the judgment of a holy God? No. And his demand is death for the wages of sin is death. But we should be able to explain to them that you don't have to die for your sins because Jesus already died 2,000 years ago and give your life to Christ. And we alam not yung theology that uh, without God's grace, they will not be able to see that. But it sh we should keep on sharing the gospel because in God's providence, this comforts us because we know that God is doing, ev is orchestrating everything for your good. But for those unbelievers, the Bible, ang sabi ng Biblia, God hates the wicked. If he hates the wicked, you think he's going to do good for them? So let's proceed. Isaiah 40, 26. Lift up your eyes on high and see. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host by number. We're talking about the heavenly host. Calling them all by name, you must start something that was happened here. No, God knows the number of the stars and He calls them by name, by the greatness of His might, and because He is strong in power, not one is missing. So imagine this God, who is over all sovereign, exercising that sovereignty and power over everything. To achieve a purpose. And kasama ka dyan sa purpose na yan. And his promise, since he's a loving God, his promise is it is for your own good. So what happened in 2020 and what's going to happen in 2021 for all of us believers, it is and it's gonna be. It was, it is now, and it's gonna be for our own good. And that should comfort us. And that is how we should face 2021. With comfort, with strength, 
and with trust sa Panginoon, not with uncertainty and doubt. Hindi po ba? Let's proceed. Acts 4, 27 to 28. For truly in this city they were gathered together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, along with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. Kaintindihan niyo po yun, itong, itong text na to. No? Si Peter, may sabi nito, di ba? Na, for truly in this city, Jerusalem, they were gathered together against your holy servant. So people gathered against Jesus. Sino yun? Si Herod, si Pontius Pilate, ang mga Gentiles, ang mga tao sa Israel. And we know what happened. Jesus was crucified by these people, di ba? But ang sabi ng text na to, ang yung crucifixion ni Jesus, alam po natin that is the most it's the most heinous or the grievous sin na nagawa ng mankind crucifying God, crucifying Jesus Christ, no? It involves this this verse involves a lot of sin ng mga tao when they crucify Jesus Christ. And yet ang sabi dito sa verse 28 to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. So God was kasama sa providence ng Panginoon yung pagka-crucify ni Jesus Christ. It was His will na mag-crucify si Jesus Christ. What about those people who sin? We have to remember that we are responsible for our sin. God ordained those people to sin, but at the end of the day, they are responsible for their sins. And those sins, kasama yung sins na yun, put Jesus on the cross. And yet, sinabi ng verse na to, God had a hand on it sa crucifixion ni Jesus Christ. To do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. Planned even before it happened. Predestined, destined destination. Kung saan patutunguhan. No? Even before na mangyari, dinikrina ng Panginoon that Jesus Christ would be crucified by these people. No? Kasama si Judas, lahat. No? Even to the smallest detail leading to the crucifixion of Christ was under God's providence. Nakikita niyo po ito. Uh, sino po maka-identify niya? Actually, that's dust. Di ba pag, na-experience na, na nyo yan, pag may nakapasok na sun rays, tapos may kita nyo yung dust sa room nyo, na dam, pag nakita mo yung dust, ang dami, naisip mo, ito pala yung hinihinga ko, no? you're breathing this kind of air, na dami palang dust. John Piper was saying, even sa mga position ng mga dust na to, yung mga location, mga positions nila, is under the providence of God. Yung maliliit na dust is under the providence, under the power of God. At ano yung pinakamaliit na particle ngayon? Ito, ang tawag quarks. Sa loob ng protons at saka neutrons, yan, quarks. So, lahat ng mga quarks to the universe is under the providence of God. Imagine na how powerful is our God. And if you are, if God is for us, who can be against us? And this should encourage each and every one of us na no matter what happens and what is happening in our lives, just examine yourself. Are you loving God? Because if you are loving God, according to what the Bible says, if you love God, you obey His commandments. If you're obeying His commandments, and every time you're presented with sin, if you are presented with a sin and you always choose Jesus, I know from time to time we fall. But when you are presented with a temptation, you have two choices. To say no to sin and say yes to Jesus, saying don't give in. So we always have two choices. Now you can rate yourself sa obedience mo. 
the more you choose Jesus, the more you obey. At ang sabi ng Bible, if you love God, the mark of love, your love for Christ is obedience. And Romans 8, 28, the lovers of God have this promise of God. Now, this powerful God who is sovereign from the quarks all the way to the universe and he's using all things for the good of his people is for you. But examine yourself. No matter how loud you, 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 you claim to be a Christian, you declare to be a Christian, and yet there's no works that back it up. Walang, wala kang deeds na nag-prove na Christiano ka. Na every time you're presented with a temptation, you always love to choose temptation because you don't have love for Jesus anyway. Then you better fear because this promise is not for you. And God's providence, uh, yes, it will accomplish its goals, and it is always good for those that, for the lovers of God, and it may not be good for the unbelievers, because at the end of the day there will be judgment, and God's judgment is just. You know. Okay, so tapos na tayo sa extend. I hope you understand ang extend, ang 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 sakop, tama po na sakop, ang sakop ng providence, ng power ng panginoon, lahat lahat. From the smallest to the biggest. Atama yung mga testimonies nyo, giving thanks to God, kay sis Zai. Tama yan because it was God na you are alive now, na buhay ka, at may bahay ka. It's all because of God, all because of His providence. He worked all things to achieve these good things for you. No? And uh, so what does it say? What does it tell us about prayers as well? We have to remember, guys, prayer does not change God's decision, but it changes us. It changes our hearts. Now we are dependent on God and it changes our character. Now, if we are praying for letter A and letter A does not happen, you are content. Na hindi, ka nag, hindi ka nagtatampo. Kasi you understand. God always has some better for you. At ang ginagawa niya ay what is best for you actually. Okay, let's proceed. So, kung may mga questions kayo, isulat niyo po. Then uh, let's have a brief question and answer portion kung may time pa po tayo after this. What is the nature of God's providence? Ano naman yung nature ng God's providence? Natapos na tayo sa extent. Ito naman yung nature. And these are the questions that we can raise. Does he govern by coercion? Pinipilit ba? Kinocoerce ba niya yung tao? Does he take away the meaningfulness of human volition? Uh, choices? As he governs all things and all people? Kung, kung ang providence ng Pahino ay sakop lahat pati tao, pinupwersa ba niya ang will ng tao? Pinupwersa ba niya ang tao to do his will? No. The answer is no. The nature of God's providence is formed by His wisdom, justice, and mercy, according to John Piper. Of course, there are verses that support su support uh, this. You know? And I added love and by His love because there are so many verses na ang providence ng Panginoon is formed by His love for mankind. Let's see the verses po, yung mga supporting verses nito. Daniel 4.37 Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of Heaven for all His works are right and His ways are just. So God's works are right and God's ways are just. So ang providence ng Panginoon, ang pag-orchestrate ng Panginoon sa lahat ng bagay to achieve His purpose is always righteous and always just. Psalm, Psalm 104, 24. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom have you made them all. The earth is full of your, of your creatures. So, ang ginamit ng Panginoon 
to apply his providence wisdom so hindi lang na come what may or kesirak sira no god thought it well first and applied no yung knowledge na in applying niya in his providence in wisdom next genesis 18:25 sabi ni abraham far be it from you to do such a thing to put the righteous to death with the wicked so that the righteous fare as the wicked far be that from you shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just rhetorical question yan he's saying the judge of all the earth is just no. and he does not far be it from you no. this is too far this is not you lord not to put the righteous with the wicked no. to put the righteous to death with the wicked so his providence is just his providence is righteous and his providence is just matthew 16 27 for the son of man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his father and then he will repay each person according to what he has done so that is justice according to what he has done the lord will judge men and kasama yung judgment sa providence ng Panginoon. No. Fair and just. Ephesians 2, 4 to 5. But God, being rich in mercy, so righteous, ju uh, right, just, and merciful. No. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love, love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ by grace you have been saved so god achieved his purpose some Ephesians the, he made them alive what's the reason paano niya anong reason ano yung fuel na ginawa niya yun yung providence niya yun mercy and love so god is just god is righteous god is merciful and god is love and all this character of his Ay ginamit, he poured them and wisdom, he poured them sa kanyang providence, sa kanyang pag-exercise ng kanyang power. So this should comfort us na itong God natin is not only powerful, but he's just, he's merciful, he's righteous, he's loving. And all this ay ginamit niya para sa kanyang pag-exercise ng kanyang power sa atin. And... Uh, and we will see some more verses later on that no one can separate us from his love. Ezekiel 36, 26 to 27. And I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a new heart, give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. So, balik tayo sa tanong, kung kinukoerce ba ng Panginoon yung tao para lang ma-accomplish ma yung will niya? Hindi. Ano ginagawa ng Panginoon? Bibigyan ka niya ng bagong puso so that your will will be aligned with His will. So, hindi ka niya kailangan i-coerce to do His will. Romans 5.5 and hope does not put us to shame, but because put us to shame because God's God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So the moment a person is born again, God's love has been poured into our hearts. No, so now the born again ng tao, ang love ng Panginoon through the Spirit ay nasa puso na ng tao yun. So. So, anong relevance niyan? Ang relevance niyan is alam po natin na if you love God, you obey His commandments. No? So, hindi ka na kailangan niya i-coerce to do His commandments because you have the love that comes from Him and you use that love to obey His commandments. Ibig sabihin, yung pag-obey mo sa Panginoon, which is part of His providence, has become a delight to you because you love Him. You love obeying Him. So, there's no coercion there. 
Second Corinthians 5, 14 to 15. For the love of Christ controls us. It is the love of Christ, his love for us, that generates love for him and for others, controls us. Because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. And because of that love, then I feel nothing that generates as well love for him. No. We love God because he loved us first. But right? so that love that we receive from him, from him generates this love, agape love for him and for others in such a way now the result is we live for Christ. When we say we live for Christ, inuuna natin si Lord. Inuuna natin yung commandments niya. At kung basahin mo pa uh, itong 2 Corinthians, ano yung ang um, specifically anong sinasabi ng living for Christ there? Being an ambassador of Christ and you've been given a ministry of reconciliation. In short, you preach Christ. Those who are born again preach Christ. So isang mark din to, isang yardstick na kasama ka ba, kasama ka ba sa Romans 8.28? Are you a lover of God? And are you benefiting from the providence of God? Check yourself. Are you preaching the gospel? Because the Bible says His love will control you to perform uh, the commission that He has given you, which is the ministry of reconciliation. So do you... Do you Ma feel mo ba yung, yung blood pressure mo when you start when you're given the opportunity to share the gospel? Ma feel mo bang your blood pressure rising because of excitement and zeal? Yes, and this is an opportunity for me to share Jesus to others. Those are the marks of true believers na kasama sa Romans 8:28 who are enjoying the providence of God. Ephesians 2, 8 to 10. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Good works prepared beforehand sa mga believers that God he, he does not need to coerce you to coerce you to perform his will. Para lang uh, mangyari yung ano niya, providence. Okay. So, question. Are you forced? Ask yourself now. Are you forced or coerced by God to do good works? Are you even doing good works? No. So, if not, then it, te it tells about the nature of God's providence. Na hindi ka pinupwersa ng Panginoon para lang mangyari yung plano niya, yung providence niya. Because the nature of His providence is what? Inamit niya yung love, ay yung wisdom, mercy, just, and love. Okay, let's proceed. Kung may mga kayo, isulat yun, and then we'll discuss it later on. What is the goal of God's providence? This is the last point. What is the goal of God's providence? What is the ultimate purpose of it all? Sa lahat-lahat ng providence, ng pag-orchestrate ng Panginoon, sa lahat ng bagay, ano yung purpose niyan? Now, according to John Piper, sabi niya, the ultimate goal of God's providence is to glorify His grace. Now, to glorify His grace. Ano po yung grace? Yung favor, undeserved favor na binibigay ng Panginoon sa mga tao. And to glorify or to magnify or to show the world or to give value as we should sa grace ng Panginoon sa mga tao. Kasi itong grace ng Panginoon are most of the time taken for granted and only those who understand that we are living by God's grace alone live in such a way na makikita mo yung gratitude and love 
nila sa Panginoon because they understood this. So the ultimate goal of God's providence is to glorify His grace in the where? In the spiritual and moral and bodily beauty of Christ undeserving blood bought bride. Sino yun? The church. The church. So we as the church ang instrument ng Panginoon to glorify His grace. No? The redeemed from all ages as she enjoys, she dito ang church, enjoys, enjoys God's providence, God's grace, reflects, and thus magnifies His what? His greatness and beauty and worth above everything in the new heavens and the new earth. So yan ang purpose ng Panginoon sa kanyang providence. Sa lahat ng mayayari sa mundong ito, and even sa universe, sa labas ng mundong ito, under, on, and above, sa lahat ng mayayari, ang purpose niyan is to give glory to His grace para makita yung grace ng Panginoon sa tao. At ginagamit niya ang church. No? To glorify His grace in the spiritual and moral and bodily beauty of Christ's undeserving blood-bought bride, the church. Para makita ng mga tao yung grace ng Panginoon sa church. Then, ang church naman mismo, ang, ang dahil sa, sa appropriate or proper response natin sa grace ng Panginoon, ay makikita naman din ng ibang tao na mamagnify yung glory ng grace ng Panginoon. So that's the ultimate goal of it all. To glorify God. To glorify His grace. His goodness. The favor that He gives to us. The undeserved favor. Lahat tayo mga Kristiyano, we receive this grace. The undeserved favor natin, natanggap natin yung grace ng Panginoon because not, not a single one of us deserve to be saved. Not a single one of us deserve God's love because we're all sinners in different ways. Iba-ibang degree, iba-ibang level. And yet God lavished us with His grace and made us alive in Christ. And that should reflect sa buhay natin. And understanding all this, na itong nangyayari sa mundo year 2020 at ano pa mangyayari sa year 2021, ang purpose niyan is to glorify His grace and we have works to do as Christians. We share the gospel to others and we use our lives and how we live so that they may see the grace of God in our lives and thus glorify our Father who is in heaven. Verses, Ephesians 1, 3 to, 3 to 6. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, the nature of God's providence again is here. In love, he, pred he predestined us. He predestined us for adoption to himself as sons to Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. So itong lahat na ginagawa ng Painon sa buhay natin, in love, the predestination, the adoption, and even the glorification, ang purpose ng lahat-lahat na yan, to the praise of His glorious grace. Para makita yung grace ng Panginoon. Kung how merciful and how and yun yung natanggap nating favor sa Panginoon. Next, Ephesians 1, 11 to 14. In Him we have obtained an inheritance having been predestined according to the purpose of Him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. So our lives are to be used to the praise of his glory. 
in him you also when you have you heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation and believed in him were sealed with the promise holy spirit who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it again to the praise of his glory by the way po ang palagi kong ginagamit sa so itong mga verses na nakita natin pabalik-balik yung predestination at chosen di ba so talks about election so ibig sabihin kasama sa pang, sa, sa providence ng Panginoon yung election and uh, by the way ang palagi kong ginagamit na version is ESV alam niyo po yung meaning ng ESV Ang uh, meaning nito is uh, elect, uh, elect standard version. Joke lang po. Joke, joke lang. <laughs> Napaka-seryoso yun naman. Of course, English standard version yan. <laughs> Nabi ko lang elect standard version. <laughs> okay. So to the praise of His glory. No? Ang purpose ng providence ng Panginoon is to the praising of His grace, to the praising of His glory, to the glorification of His grace. So, it's for God na makita yung goodness niya sa tao. Matthew 5.16 In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works Now you're not cursed because you have a new heart and you love to do good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Romans 8.28. Now, balik na tayo sa text. Uh, we are about to end. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. And we know that for those who love God, the believers, those who gave their lives to Christ, at may kita natin yan sa buhay nila. Not only those who claim to be Christian, na wala ka naman may kita sa, that supports their claim. But for those who truly love God, truly, true lovers of God, ang providence ng Panginoon is for your good. At sabihin, bakit for good? At, uh, nagkasakit ako? At may, uh, no. Ultimate good. At the end of the day, you will be able to look back pag nandun ka na sa new heaven and new earth and you'll be able to look back and say, thank you God na nangyari lahat yun because it's for my own good. Okay. For those who are called according to His purpose, again, the talk talks about election all the way to glorification. For those whom He foreknew, He also predestined. Pinapakita lang dito yung goodness na sinasabi dito na all things work for the good of those. Kasama to sa good na sinasabi dito. Yung uh, foreknowledge, predestination or election to be conformed to the image of His Son in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers, and those whom he predestined, he also called, effectually called, and those whom he called, he also justified, declared not guilty and righteous even, and those whom he justified, he also glorified. From election, from predestination, all the way to the glorification, kasama sa providence ng Panginoon, at kasama yan sa good na sinasabi niya dito. The, what then shall we say to these things? What things about <coughs> yung uh, good na sinabi ng providence ng Panginoon, yung election, justification, calling, and glorification. So what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? No? We, pinakita ko lang sa inyo kanina yung sovereignty ng Panginoon na from the quarks to the universe He's in control and he's exercising that power sa lahat ng bagay, yung providence niya. At sabi dito, if God is for us, if that God who is sovereign over all is for me, who can be against me? Yung boss mo sa opisina? Yung katabi mong napakasungit na office mate? No. Who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, he even gave his son for you, but gave him up for us all. How Will he not also with him graciously give you all things? Give us all things. Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? 
Christ Jesus is the one who died. And more than that, who was raised? Who is at the right hand of God right now? So yung abogado at saka yung judge are for you. you know? Who indeed is interceding for us? See, Jesus Christ is interceding for us. You know? He's our lawyer. At ang judge, ang Panginoon, is also for you. At ang lawyer is also for you. So paano ka matatalo sa kaso? No? And who can be against you? No? Who can bring any appeal? Who can bring any charge? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation na mangyayari nung nangyari yung mga uh, nangyayari problema sa 2020? Or itong mangyayari sa 2021? Nothing. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution sa family mo, persecution sa family, persecution sa opisina, persecution because of Christ, or famine, or nakedness. Pag sinabing nakedness, walang-wala ka na talaga. No? Nakedness, or danger, or sword, as it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. You're like a sheep in the midst of the wolves. No, no. Nothing can separate you. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Ito yung things, all these things na sinasabi, itong mga, mga, mga negative dito, we are more than conquerors because ang providence ng Panginoon overcomes all those. No? And nothing can separate, and no, no one and nothing can separate you from the love of Christ. For I am sure, sabi nito, I am sure, sabi ni Paul, hindi siya nag, wala siyang doubt, ha? He's not, hindi niya sinabing, I think, no, hindi. Sabi niya, for I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us, separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's how confident Paul was. That's how well he understood the providence of God. And if we understand the providence of God, there shouldn't be any doubt, there shouldn't be any fear, but comfort, boldness, you know, security, peace, and rest. You know. So, knowing that the sovereign God is for us and no one can be against us, and in his providence, in his exercise of that sovereignty, in all things, work together for our good. God exercises his, so his sovereignty, sa providence niya, and orchestrates all things for your good, and nothing and no one shall separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord, for in all things we are more than conquerors. Through him who loved us. What shall we say then? So the ang tanong is for each and every one of us. If you understood what I just explained to you today about the providence of God and what you have in Jesus Christ as a lover of Christ, what shall we what shall you say then? What can you say? You know? How are you going to face the next 358 days of 2021 or even the next 100 years? In fear or in comfort? In comfort for those who love God, in fear for those who don't. So let us learn together. See you next time. And God bless. After our closing prayer. So let's pray. Father, we thank you, God, for your word. We thank you, Lord, for reminding, reminding us, oh God, that you are sovereign. And as, as you exercise your sovereignty in all things, you are working, Lord, you are orchestrating everything for your purpose. And we know that in that ultimate purpose of yours, to glorify your name, to glorify your grace, all things as well work for our own good, individual good, God. 
individual good and even the collective good. So one day, the new heaven and the new earth, understanding what you're doing, we will, in spite of what we are, some of the negative, according to what we see, based on our limited mind, on how we see things, that sometimes we see things negatively without fully understanding that's part of the good thing that you're doing, that one day we will be able to look back or look from hindsight, so to say, and say, thank you, God, because of your providence, all things work for the good of me and all things work for the good of those who love you and all things work for the good or for the all things work for the glorification of your grace. Father in heaven, we thank you for reminding us and may you continue to deal with us. May you continue to speak to us and make us understand more of your providence. And Lord, may our understanding of your providence, of your work, of who you are, the, the extent, the nature and the goal of your providence, give us the boldness, give us the strength, give us the comfort, give us the rest that we need and the peace, Lord God, as we face the next 358 days of 2021 and even the next 100 years or eternity to come. So Father in heaven, we thank you and thank you for your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.